Uh, there's mouse poo everywhere. I'm gonna put Buddy's suit on. I think we got that on camera. Welcome to our Turn Electrics Evening Edition. Hello and welcome back. You were expecting Corey, but you've got me because I want to tell you how you can win £10,000 worth of tools with an amazing giveaway that is running right now with CEF, Superod and Klein. If you love Superod Klein tools like we do, go to CEF, buy some and you'll be entered into a giveaway where you can win £10,000 worth of Superod or Klein tools as well as a trip of a lifetime to Texas and loads of other amazing prizes available to be won every single day, week and month for the next few months and who doesn't want to win £10,000 worth of tools? There's a link in the description where you can find out how to enter, but it's super easy. So head to that link and get on board. Now, I hope you enjoy the video. I'll just show you the job. So the consumer unit is over here, sort of there on the other side of that wall. So the plan is I'm going to drill out, run it down, clip to the underside of there all the way along. At this point here, I don't think we'll fit in that duct. So we'll go underground. We bury the cable along, up, Rather than go all the way round and then over the garage door, we're going to take it straight up through here. He's replacing all of this in a couple of weeks for UPVC. So I'm going to cut out a little section of it, chuck it up into the loft. We've just improvised a loft hatch. Um, I'm going to squeeze up there. There's a nice little quarry sized hatch for me to get up and in. So I'm gonna climb up into the loft and chuck the cable over and across, drop it down where it needs to go. So it's gone from actually a really pretty complicated route to more straightforward, just because we was talking about maybe rodding it over. Because it's a big open space, but we just thought, you know what, that shot is one in a million. Actually, if it was one in a million, we'd probably do it. So it's one in 10 million to get it through and over the other side of a garage, I just don't think it's gonna happen. So we're just gonna climb up into the loft to save any faffing about. Yeah, so hope you enjoy it. What's your opinion on burying cables? I always find it really frustrating when I can't get them to the depth that I want to get them to. Because like I say, personally, I just, I've always been a 600 mil to the top guy, but there's lots of varying opinions on it. So give me yours, enjoy. So that EV Ultra cable, it's got six mil three core SWA, as well as the data cable inside of it. It's quite a thick cable. I really would like that duct to be deeper anyway. Really, if you're, if you're burying a cable, it wants to be 600 mil to the top of the, to the top of the duct or to the top of the cable at, as, at a minimum. But I don't think I'm gonna get that there because I'm hitting concrete right there. See, I'm hitting the edge of the curbstone. So I've come along a bit and then there's more concrete there. So I don't think I'm gonna get 600 mil. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put it inside something and then I'm gonna lay down um, like a tile tape or something over the top just to make a bit of an effort. The original plan for here, Jordan was gonna send me here on his own, on my own. I think he's been drinking on the job. He's been having some of that French wine in the office. Really, really heavy cable drum. Thankfully, I've got the human muscle, the walking neck. Every time they see me, they're just gonna say, one minute, he's always pushing cable. The last time I was rolling it out like this. I'll just push that button there. Yeah. That good? All right, up we go. Oh, this is mean. You're going to fit through this. Yeah, I'll fit. First, we do the old wasp nest check. Uh, there's mouse poo everywhere. <laughs> Flipping it, the things I do for money. I might go put a buddy suit on. In fact, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put a buddy suit on. I hate single-use plastic, but I hate being covered in rat and mouse feces just slightly more. Okay. <laughs> Take me for dinner first. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. Okay, well, there's lots of dead mice stuff. But it's all right. I can see the cable over there. So extremely tight space. The big boy. Oh, flipping heck. No, Jones. Wait a minute, matey. I'm on my way. That's good. Oh, there's the dead mouse. Should we chuck that at Nathan? Oh, told you. Oh, I just think there's no mouse traps up here. Come back. There we go. A dead mouse. I hope you got that on camera. No, I missed it. I was literally about to record and I got a dead mouse. I'm just hoping I don't sit on a mouse trap, that's all. Oh, and there's a wasp nest. Right. I'm gonna chuck the cable down. Find the ladder. Wait, you've got to here. Yeah I know but I can't get over there, it's too narrow. We'll have to chuck a rod up to me. There's loads. Hey yay yay. 
Mamma mia, that's a pizza. Right, I'm gonna take this up. Ah, I found a floor. I'm gonna make a quick modification to my trousers. 3M, pay attention. I can now access my pockets. Quick, simple modification. Some of the most effective modifications are the most simple ones. I like my modifications like I like my workmates. <laughs> simple. <laughs> you better be careful on that ladder. <laughs> Yeah, probably about another five metres. Yeah, that'll be all right, actually. Nathan said he wants me to auction off this suit to the highest bidder. It's very sweaty. It's been worn. I won't wash it. I'll sell it as it is. Um, also, these bracelets. I'll be honest, I'm not even that into bracelets, but because people have made fun of them, I specifically make sure I wear bracelets now. Because people need to get over themselves. They're not allowed to wear rings. I can understand that one. Fair enough. But bracelets, that's going to snap. If your wrist is weaker than, than a piece of nylon string, or elastic, then you've probably got some sort of fragile bone disease where you shouldn't should you shouldn't be in a trade. No, you should be like in bubble wrap office somewhere. So yeah, I'm gonna keep wearing them and I'll sell these as well. If you want them, I reckon they're, I'll probably settle for about five each, 500 each, five ton. The suit is going for an auction. The money's gonna go to save the cows. And by save the cows, I mean, get rid of all of them because they're terrible for the environment. Bear with, Jordan's gonna put the GoFundMe auction page link just below. So the job is actually going pretty smoothly to be fair. I think if I was on my own, I'd be crying. It was just a complicated run, but when you've got two people, it's one of them. I reckon on my own, this probably would have taken me two, maybe three days. But with someone else, half a day to a day. <laughs> because when you're feeding cables, pushing them through, crawling through the loft, rather than me get in there, pull it, go around the other side, feed it off, having another person makes a massive difference. So we've, um, we've already got the cable through and into place. We're just about to mount it here on the wall. And um, we've got the EV Ultra cable. The EV Ultra cable, it's a cable that's made by Doncaster Cables. I'll show you it when, when we actually terminate it. But it, it's basically a six mil three core SWA. And it's also got a shielded Cat5 cable in there as well. So we need that to do the CT connections because I think it's a little bit too far to get signal over to the Harvey, which will be monitoring the incoming supply. Let's see what, what lovely pencils have you got? What do you recommend for this? Should we go for that? Oh, yeah, we'll go for that. Nice. What height do you want? Uh, it's exactly my nipple. Yeah. Do you have a, uh, a level? Where's the level that you stole off me? I'll go back. You return in thief. That's so convenient. I was born to be an EV installer. <laughs> Having a sharp Stanley blade is just life-changing. So good. Is my concentration bottom lip hanging out? <laughs> my humongous overbite or underbite, I always forget which one's which. So these are my measuring spanners, which because I'm a complete and utter cowboy, I'm just gonna use them to tighten up the gland. So it is raining. We've just had our lunch. Got the uh, we've got the cable in. We're making really good progress actually. We're just fixing everything back. We need to clean the cable of all the brick dust. I think it looks smart actually. It's a nice tidy little install. But I'm going to quickly terminate this. I'll just put the cover on it so it didn't get wet while we're gone. We'll quickly terminate this and then we're going to go around the front and start cleating it all in and getting the cable through to the consuming it, etc, etc. These are the um, cutters that Klein sent us. I'm a big fan of using croppers. I don't really use side cutters anymore. I used to only really use the big ones. Is it the 210 mil or whatever? Or is these the 160s? But actually, I've been really into using them just because they're nice and small. They fit into my pockets nicely. And actually, I, they're still so sharp, I can get enough power off them to do most tasks that I'd use the 210s for. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I am a fan, actually. John's already drilled this cable out. So what I'm considering is bringing the armoured cable, bringing that EV Ultra cable up to here and in, and then, you know, power in, bring this one down straight into the top, or saying that I'd rather go down the side if I can. That's going to look a bit rubbish, isn't it? Or maybe I, sh I might just use that box to cover that hole. Yeah, we're going to do that. Have I got enough to get to the top? Yes, I have. Yeah, new plan, new plan, new plan, Stan. We'll just poke this out the back. We'll put some silicon and stuff in there, obviously. We're gonna mount that there, that will cover the render pop. Render pop, it's another flavor of disgusting ice lolly. We'll bring the EV Ultra cable straight up into that, and then I'm gonna bring some, maybe a bit of Copex down 
and in there, a bit of flexible conduit. I reckon I'll be able to rod it in that space there. If I can drill it into the cavity, I'll get the flexible conduit in because all I need in here, actually no, do you know what? No, I've got a different plan. I'm gonna see if I can get the CT cables out through that gap and into the back, I don't even need to go in there. I'll put the CT in the consumer unit and I'll just have it here. I'm gonna go have a little look inside put the CT clamp inside here, inside the consumer unit, because it just needs to go around the main tails. Basically, all this is going to do is it's going to send the signal back to the Zappi via the data cable in that EV Ultra, just to feed back the information on how much energy the building's using so that you can do things like grid limits and well, just monitor your power if you have solar and things as well. You can, you can expand it and use it for that, but it will just mean that we're never going to blow the main fuse, basically, if say you had a 60 amp fuse. But yeah, we just install it for them as standard. So I think I'll clip that on there. There's a non-RCD way there already, lovely. So I don't even need to change anything inside there. I'll just poke this out. Nice. So we are, we're doing pretty well. So we've got it all wired up. We've got the cable out. We've got the box done. We've got the CTs done. I've just labeled up this. They need their periodic inspection doing. I'll mention that to him. What I, what I tend to do is I put on my um, inspection label EV only, because obviously that only covers the EV charging circuit, which is on the non-RCD side. And we leave plenty of slack in there for if they do want a board change. John is just, you done? All right, we can switch that on now. So we'll go to the other end and check that's all hunky-dory. So you have to flip it through all the different modes. This basically is the brain of a, of a car charger, and I'm gonna simulate all the different things. We're going to um, give old mousy mate a proper send off because I'm feeling pretty bad for him. Where is he? Where's John's hidden him for me? I wouldn't be surprised if he's put him in my van somewhere or in my water bottle or something. That's exactly the sort of thing that he used to do to me when I was little. I've worked with John for a long, long time, you see. He's seen me in every phase, my awkward phase, which I'm still in, my little chubby phase, which was very cute, kind of slowly getting back to that phase. And would I be at all surprised if he put a dead mouse in my sandwich? No, I wouldn't be. It's not beyond him. For some reason, I still love him to pieces though. Not really sure why. John, where have you put this mouse? I need to give the poor fella a send off. My little Stuart little friend of ours. Mm, 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 mm. Two o'clock. Where? Ah, oh, oh, there he is. Right, come on fella. He's actually pretty mangy looking mouse from me to be honest that's like Stuart Little if he discovered meth right do you want to name him do you have any nice words Nathan maybe a nice mouse based on he gouda bean something nice play on words there cheesy right there we go 600 mil under we tried to go deeper here, but we couldn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to alert the customer. And I don't know, basically, we've left a bit of slack so we can either dig it down deeper through this concrete and push it down or put some sort of something hard over it, maybe a bit, bit of a tile tape or... Yeah, not sure. For now, we're just going to put a bit of backfill. Ashes to ashes. Rust to rust. That's a, that's a thumbnail right there. <laughs> I was actually a grave digger once, you know, that was my past job. Not, not many people know that. Oh, sorry, gold digger, big difference. So we'll backfill it a bit. Yeah, we'll get a bit of tape on it. I think we'll lay the tape on the very top as well until he gets it sorted. So I'm not happy leaving it like that, really. Let's lay a touch of this down. Right, we're all finished. We've actually done amazing. We got here at half seven and we've pretty much been solid. Had our lunch standing up. So I'll talk you through the job. It's actually been a really nice one. Um, it's one of them where if I was on my own, probably would have been here for days. But having someone else help feed the cable through and stuff just made it so much easier and have a pair of hands. So we've come out the back of the consumer unit into that. We've taken the CTs off of the main switch, the one current transformer, um, and that is connected onto the EV Ultra cable. That goes down through here, cleated along the underside, goes down underground through this duct, which I slated, but we actually did manage to fit the cable through, so I, I, I'll eat my words. They come down there past Mousy Junction, up there into the loft, and then they come down out of the loft, up and into the zappy, which is all completed. 
So we've done the firmware updates, we've done everything we need to do, we've tested it. It's been a really sweet little job actually. It's kind of a bit more of a tricky, not your usual straightforward MYJ out the back of the consumer unit, but we like them, we like a bit of a challenge, a bit of a good interesting cable route. And having John with us was a huge hand. Yeah, he's getting good, he's getting pretty good now, John, actually. <laughs> Saying that just to wind him up. Yeah, he's a good lad. We needed him today. Without him, we would have definitely struggled. Yeah, we've done well. Anyway, take care, everyone. Um, hope you've enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.